Hi there. In the previous video, we added an authenticate endpoint that returns either a 200 and a JWT or a 401, depending on whether the username and password supplied are correct. Now, we want to update some of our API endpoints so that they're only accessible if the user supplies that JWT as an authentication header. Let's quickly recap how the authenticate endpoint works. I'll jump over to the terminal and I'll use reverse search to find the previous authentic authenticate. So in this case, we are calling authenticate with the username bookseller99 and password one. So if I try that, this username and password is correct. So we get a token back. And if I run that again, using dash V, you can actually see the response, response code here. So we get a 200. Now, if I run the same thing again, using a different password, I get, um, nothing in the response body, and I get a 401 unauthorized. Now, the whole purpose of adding this authenticate endpoint is so that we can restrict some of our API endpoints so that they can only be accessed when this JWT is returned. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's start with the books controller. Now, one of the ways to achieve this is to use Rails uh, before action. What that allows me to do is I can say before action and I can specify some method. And what that will do is before any action is called in this controller, it will run a method. And the way we can use this is uh, we'll define a method that will check for the uh, authentication header and if it's present and it's and it's valid we'll let the user continue if it's not then we'll return early and return a 401 the other thing we can do with the before action is only run it on certain actions so in our case let's say that any user can list the books in our system but only an authenticated user can uh, create or destroy books. So in that case, what I can do is say, uh, before action, some method only create and destroy. And let's change this method, uh, this method name, and we'll call it authenticate user. And I can define that as a private method just say def authenticate user. There we go. Now, the first thing we need to do in this authenticate user method is check the token supplied by the API caller. And we touched on this briefly in the, in the introduction, but we're going to ask the user to pass a JWT in the header. But there's a couple of different ways we can ask the user to do that. Um, however, in this video, we're going to use the uh, bearer authentication token header. And that looks like this. So the user will pass authorization, bearer, and the token. And um, this format uh, is recommended for uh, supplying uh, JWT tokens. There's other header formats for uh, different types of authorization. Now that we know how we're going to ask users to supply their JWT, we can uh, think about how we're going to pass that uh, out of the request. And for this, Rails has a, a token with options method. Let's have a quick look at that now. 
token with options rails. And you can see here it comes as part of action controller HTTP authentication token. And we get this token token and options method. And the description says it parses the token and options out of the token authorization header. So first of all, to use this, we need to include this header because we're using a Rails API only application. So at the top of the controller, I'm just going to say uh, include uh, this module. And then we can use um, we can use token and options uh, to pass the authorization header. So in so the way this works is we can say token token and options, and that will give us, as the name implies, uh, two. Uh, variables will be assigned from this, the token and options. And this method just takes the request. Now for us, we're not really interested in the options. So I'm just going to put an underscore uh, underscore there to show that we don't care about it. And uh, when we run this, we should get the token passed out of it. At this point, we should really write some tests so we're not uh, coding in the dark. So I'll open the book spec. Uh, there we go, the requests book spec. And I'll update the post books method. And what I'll do is add a, a header with an authorization token. And we can check that our um, token and options uh, method is actually parsing the JWT correctly. So here I'll add headers and I'll add authorization bearer and I'll just say one, two, three. And then what I'm going to do is I'll update the authenticate user method and I'll just raise the token so that we can see whether it's parsing correctly or not. I'll jump back over to the spec and I'll run this test. And you can see here it's uh, returned one, two, three. So we've given it an authorization bearer token one, two, three and it's correctly passed that uh, out of the header. The next thing we need to do is add logic to decode the token. If you remember, we already have an authentication token service. Right now it just has a single call method, which uh, takes the user ID and produces a JWT. What we want to do now is take the incoming JWT and decode it, um, and check that it's valid and uh, pass out the user ID. So what I'm going to do is add a new um, class method called decode, which will take a token, oops, and then we can do JWT decode with the token, the HMAC secret and um, this uh, true param, which uh, I cannot remember what that does. Let's have a quick look. Ruby JWT. Oh, looks like it's uh, false if you don't want any validation, but because we're using a HMAC secret, we need to set it to true.
and let me specify the uh, algorithm and this would just be uh, oh yeah, algorithm type. There we go. And this will give us a decoded token. And what we can do with this is we can pull out the um, user ID. Um, let's uh, let's take another quick look at the documentation. So it returns an array with um, the data here and the algorithm as the second uh, element in the array. So we need to pull out the first element to index zero. And we need to get the user ID from the uh, data object here. Okay, so we have this decode method now, it will take a token, try to decode it, and then it will try to pull out the user ID and return it. You'll notice that we have call and decode, which uh, doesn't really doesn't really work. This should be encode and decode, or perhaps we'll change the uh, method names to something else. But I'm going to leave it as call for now and come back in a future video and uh, tidy this up. So now I just need to update the books controller to actually pass the token into our new method. So I can call authentication token service decode. And I can pass in the token here. And this should return to me a user ID. And what I'll do is I'll raise that user ID and then I can run the tests again and see what happens. Oops. So we get undefined decoded token. That makes sense because it's the wrong name. It should be decode. Okay, so now we're getting a JWT decode error. And that makes sense because if you remember in the spec, I just passed in one, two, three, which is obviously not a valid JWT. So what I can do now is jump back over to the browser and I can go to JWT IO and I can generate a quick uh, JWT with a user ID. So what I'll do is delete this, delete this, and we'll just have a user ID of, let's provide user ID of one. And we also need the correct HMAC secret uh, which I can get from the token authentica uh, sorry the authentication token service. So I'll grab that and now I get this JWT and I'll jump back over to the spec and for now I'm just going to dump it in here. As with the authentication service I need to come back and tidy this up. But for now, I just want to get some quick feedback. So let's run this again. Okay. So now our service is decoding the JWT and it's returning the user ID that we provided. Okay, and the last thing we need to do is use that user ID, which is returned by the authentication token service to do a database lookup and actually check that a user exists with that ID. And then we can say, um, if that user exists, then we return um, or we carry on with the execution of the, of the controller. So the user can uh, 
successfully make an API call. If the uh, lookup fails, then we can return a 401. So what we can do is use this user ID here to do a lookup. And this Rails find method, the way it works is if it finds the user, it will return it. If it doesn't, then it will ra uh, raise an exception. It will raise an active record, record not found exception. So what I can do is rescue from that and render status oops, unauthorized. So we get the token from the request. We pass it into the token uh, authentication token service. We decode it, pull out the user. And if we can actually find the user in the database, we will uh, let the um, her caller call the API. If we can't, then we'll return an unauthorized um, response code. Now let's test it out with curl. If I make an API call to API v1 books, I'll do a post request to hit the create controller action. And I will also supply a new header. So this should be authorization bearer. And then I need a JWT. So I'll jump back over to JWT IO. And what I'll do to start with is use a user ID, which I know is not in the database. So I'll take this JWT and paste it in there. And let's call the API and see what happens. I'll use dash V here. And there we go. You can see I'm getting a 401 authorized because that user can't be found in a database. Let me do a quick uh, Rails console here to find a user that does exist in the database. There we have a user ID of one. So I'll jump back over to JWTIO, user ID one, and I'll run this API call again. Only this time I'll use the JWT with a user ID of one. And now you can see I actually get, um, there's actually an error here because the params are incorrect. So let me fix that. So it says title can't be blank. So I think the book, instead of name here, it should be title. Let me just check the schema. Yeah, book should be title. And now I get, there we go, I get a 201 created and a response. So now I can only call the API when I use a valid JWT um, and the Rails app can actually find a user with that user ID. Now we're not finished yet. There's a lot of uh, tidy up we need to do, but this is already a fairly long video. So I'm going to uh, stop for now and continue this uh, in a future video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.